from a review article of Michelle Goldstein, Joel Lovowitz, Rodney Kamalka, and Nino Zangi called Gibbs and Boltzmann Entropy in Classical and Quantum Mechanics. So, <coughs> the Quantum Boltzmann Entropy they define in the following way. Uh, some macro state mu should correspond to some subspace of a Hilbert space. I don't know how to write the subspace of the Hilbert space, but of some bigger Hilbert space. And this is called a macro space. So for different, uh, different macro states, the macro spaces should be mutually orthogonal um, in the sense that there should be decomposition of the Hilbert space into an orthogonal sum. So this Hilbert space will be orthogonal sum of G like that. And this replaces the uh, partitioning of the phase space in classical Boltzmann's mechanics. Or this is the analog of it. So, the dimension of a subspace of this Hilbert space plays the role of the volume of a subset um, of phase space, right, in the classical approach. So the quantum Boltzmann entropy of some macro states nu is going to be defined as just the log of the dimensionality. So it has to be by dimension. Yeah. But what happens? What what happens? No, what happens if you're in a state that doesn't lie in any one of these subspaces? So I mean what if you're in an equal superposition? What if you're in a yeah. superposition? So then, then, then there's no fact about which macro state you're in, and of course there's no fact about the entropy. Yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, and that, that's what we would want if they take it. Yeah. So they do address this question of what happens when you have superpositions of okay. Good. states in different macro spaces. Macro spaces. So to a system with a wave function that's an element of that Hilbert space, um, you can attribute some quantum Boltzmann entropy to this guy. Right, or the quantum state might be, you know, reduced density matrix. Either way, this is the general prescription for how you would get the or define the quantum Boltzmann entropy for that quantum state. Okay, so there are some properties that this quantum Boltzmann entropy has that are nice and what we would want for an entropy, like it's it's additive or extensive. Yeah, can you say yeah. a word about what the parameter nu is supposed to represent? Oh yeah, yeah. Nu, nu is just uh, a particular like uh, macro state, um, which is corresponds to some subspace of the bigger Hilbert space. So take the nu to denote a particular macro state. It's a specification of you know pressure, temperature, volume, density yeah. Yeah. of of what. So one of the properties that this quantum Boltzmann entropy has, right, as I said, is additivity. Um, if you'd like, I can say more about why that follows, but it, you can kind of already see how it follows from the definition of the quantum Boltzmann entropy given the fact that it depends on the law of the dimensionality. Do you want the but argument V1 union V2 on the left? Uh, no, no, this will be a sum. This will be... No, I mean, what's, what's on the left of that? You just had S not with any argument. On oh, the sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's new. Just new. 
square and what sort of what is the relation between one and the other. Okay, and so I'll go through that. Yeah, so let's consider two subsystems, S1 or S2. And suppose that they have neg negligible interaction Hamiltonian. So the Hil Hilbert space um, of both together will be the tensor product of their individual Hilbert spaces. Specifying the two that specifying the interaction there. Uh -huh. 
there's an actual configuration and in a measurement interaction where this corresponds to macroscopic superposition of macroscopically disjoint weight functions, the actual configuration is going to occupy only one of the components of that uh, superposition. And then basically the, the Bowman configuration is going to pick out just one of these guys here. Right? So in other words, the quantum state to which we will ascribe the Boltzmann entropy will be the one that is occupied by the Bowman configuration. And then that's basically that's basically. So can I can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. No. So let's see. So so I want to just recap. So basically, this is exactly what I was saying on Monday. Somebody would say if you woke me up right. in the yes. middle of the night. Um, but we but we managed to get ourselves worried about all kinds of aspects of this. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember what it is that we were worried about. One thing that we were worried about was how to handle the fact that macro states are in fact only defined vaguely. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm not sure why we were so worried about that. Um, um, sure, so you'll have so, so you'll have vagueness as to exactly which subspaces are named this macro state and which subspaces, which orthogonal subspaces are named that macro state. Yeah. But I'm not sure why, you know, we're used to, uh, that seems to me now it's going to have exactly the same consequences for our talk as it does in classical mechanics. Right. Um, I'm not sure I see a problem. I mean, I'm inviting people to jump in here. Um, the second worry was that Daniel raised that it's going to be the case that you could superpose two states. And how do I want to put this? Suppose the boundaries are vague. Actually, Daniel, you said it. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I was worried that, that you know, two things that could correspond to the macro state. Well, wait, if the macro states are strictly defined, then we have a theorem. Um, any, two, any two vectors, yeah. you know, you superpose any two vectors that are in the same subspace, you're, that's not going to take you out of the subspace. Okay. So if the if the macro states are sharply defined, yep. then there's no issue. Yep. But if, this but if the mac suppose the macro states are vaguely defined, yep. then what then what we were then say what you were worried about. Well, I was worried that two two states that could two micro states that could correspond to the macro state could be superimposed in a way that that would get you out of the game of this macro state. Right. And is that what they're doing is they're assuming carefully defined macro state. Yeah but I don't understand. So suppose we don't. So so then I say that's right, so what? Yeah. Why is that a worry? Sorry what? So suppose I say what you just said absolutely correct. So what? Well, then I lost my my notion that somehow what I'm counting as a, as a by considering the whole the whole Hilbert space spanned by all those vectors, I am considering as considering as possibilities for the micro configuration things that should not be considered. Wait, I don't get it. Aren't we just being reminded here of the familiar quantum mechanical fact that by supposing, superposing two similar things, you can get something quite different from either of them? Yeah. That's, yeah. But why is that bad? Is that, I, 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 does our statistical mechanics not make, somehow not make sense in light of that fact? It, it's not, I thought the problem was not, 
the mechanics doesn't make sense. It's, it's, I thought the problem was the definition of S involves dim something, right? Dim of the subspace. Right. And if every state in the subspace has whatever characteristics you want, macroscopic characteristics you want, and only states in the subspace have the macroscopic characteristics you want, yeah. then that seems fine, right? You say, okay, the, the, I'm, I'm, what I'm really doing is assigning S to this macro state. Right. The macro state picks out a subspace. The subspace has a dimensionality, and off we go. Good. And then someone says, no, no, no. The, the su any subspace you pick, there'll be at least some stray members of it um, that intuitively don't have the macro characteristics. Why? No, why would you? I'm, I'm covering that. Why? Oh, this, so this was, I mean, this was a question where you said, look, if they're, if they're both eigenstates, then any superposition will be an eigenstate. Yeah. But when you started boosting that from being eigenstates to being near eigenstates, it's not true that the superposition of any two near eigenstates is a near eigenstate. No, that's that, right. That was the worry we had. Yeah, but right? I, 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 some space has to contain all the superpositions of all its members. I, I think, so, so if I chop, if I chop up the, um, the the state space into the, in the sub subspaces, and the subspaces are defined by certain intervals of macro area, right? Then everything in the subspace is going to look macroscopic, right? Right. Uh, uh, very much the same, but you, it won't be the case that everything that looks macroscopic like that they need right. Works. Uh, like, like a given, given state will be in the, in the right Correct, state. but there'll be no, but what you just said entails that there'll be no strays of the kind Tim but, was but, just but, but, but I, 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 I saw that it entails that, but I don't see how it speaks to what I was saying. So say again what you were saying. Yeah. Which is, the, the question is how are we doing this partitioning in the open space, right? Or whatever, it's not really a partition in space. It's not a partition, yeah. right. We're doing something. It's a decomposition. It's, 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 right. Right. And, and we wanted to decompose it into subspaces, each of which is associated with a different macros. Correct. Right. And insofar as the condition for being in that macro state was being an eigenstate of certain operators with certain values, right. we have to. Right. Because any the, 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 it really would be a proper subspace. Right. Any any superposition, any linear sum of two members would automatically be a member. Right. But if we loosen that from being an eigenstate to something like being a near eigenstate, high probability, that condition would no longer hold. Yeah, but why why do they want that condition? Because we were measuring the dimension of the I, I just want to know which, if I'm going to measure the dimension of a subspace, I need a subspace. Right. And if the condition of being the subspace is that every member satisfy the condition you give me, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the things that satisfy that condition don't form a subspace, right. then I can't have a dimension. No, 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 no. So, so here's what I take the proposal to be. Yes. Um, um, ideal, you know, ideally, abstractly, um, um, macro states are associated with subspaces. That is, macro states are associated with ranges of values of certain uh, observable properties. O of only certain. the things that are, have eigen, are eigenstates Correct. That have in those values. Correct. Correct. And then, in the usual way, if things aren't eigenstates, we say stuff like, um, you know, well, in Bohm's theory, it depends where the where the particles are, or or more generally, we say, you know, we use locutions like there isn't a fact about uh, the macro state of this thing, but the probability is high that if we were to measure these macro variables, here's what we would find. Okay, and we might, in certain circumstances where that probability is very high, get used to speaking of this. As as in the as in the macro state. Okay. Now, it, uh, let, let me just say let, let me say just one more thing. There'll be an additional issue about defining 
the macro states in terms of the of the spread of of values, you know. I'm, but that's just the usual classical approach. Yeah, that, that's not the one I'm worried about. Right. So then let's so then let's play the game here of supposing that we're defining the macro state sharply by ranges of eigenvalues. Okay, but then I, I guess the worry would be. Let me give you an analogy, and you tell me why the analogy is bad. Okay. Someone says, look, I need a quantum definition of the condition of the table being in the world. Right. And you say, oh, that's the sharp definition. I have a sharp definition. I've got a position operator. I have a position operator right. associated with regions. Right. There's a region in the room. Right. The requirement is that it be an eigenstate of that. And then I say, okay, that's the nice sharp definition. It's just no actual table is ever in such a state. Right. Right. Which seems a bit problematic. Right. Um, um, if it were, it, if it were for a moment, it wouldn't be a moment later. Which right. It's also problematic. Right. But doesn't that just mean that the eigenstates that you should use are not the position eigenstates? You should use some more smeared operator eigenstates. I, I don't know enough that. about what a smeared operator is and what their eigenstates. I just think like, I just to know whether that would solve the problem I just mentioned. I, I just think smeared with respect to the position operators makes me anything other than. What? I just think smearing with respect to the position operator. So like, eh. I, I don't know. I don't know what smearing means. I'm, I'm, this is my ignorance. I'm not okay. objecting to what you're saying. You just have to explain to me what smearing the operator means, so I can see clearly what the eigenstates of the smeared operator look like and how they behave. I just don't know. Okay. But look, in um, this is an issue that we've been living with for a long time. Um, um, this isn't just coming up in the context of, it, it's not just in the context of doing statistical mechanics that we want to be able to talk as if there's a fact of the matter about whether or not there's a table in the room, okay? Right. This, is, this is what's come up a long time ago in connection with the tails problem. Yes, exactly. And, and so on and so forth. Um, and you thought it was a problem then? I, no, 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 no. But no, but the, yeah. But now I think there's, you know, now I think I see how to live with it. Um, um, the amount, you know, so maybe here, um, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have to add, you know, as a matter of fact, um, um, at least for lots of kinds of macro states that we like to talk about things being in, they're never strictly in them. But it's also the case that they're often represented by wave functions where, where we can say with very high confidence how a measurement of the relevant macro variables would come out and, and so on and so forth. So I'm not sure what I, I just want to be clear. I think I see it now, but let me just make sure I understand the scheme. Yeah. The scheme is I take a, a, an actual living possible wave function that's probably not going to be an eigenstate. Right. Right. Uh, I'm no longer looking for any subspace of which it is a member right. whose dimensionality I'm going to measure. Correct. I then say, OK, the, the probabilities that you'll get these values right. are near the one. Right. I then represent it knowing that this is physically false by an actual eigenstate and I look at the dimensionality of the subspace. Yeah, something like, like that. that. Yeah. I just went, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Good. That I there wasn't a funny tone of voice there. No, no, no. Right? Yeah, I, good. I'm just trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 good. So, I, 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 you were saying what the worry was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. don't understand how this resolves. Yeah, the I think, I think, I, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. Good. 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 Uh, that's great. So, maybe we. So, so the situation is we woke up in the middle of the night, we got really scared, but it turns out that everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay. Okay, so so you you you, you, partition, you you take a certain sum of a certain number of back variables. You partition their ranges into in, 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 in chunks in, in, with some arbitrariness. Right? You Make, you, you form the corresponding decomposition of the Hilbert space. Typical state, yeah, yeah, right here, right there. Now, typical wave functions, no matter how. Watch your language. 
This is technically correct. I think I'm okay. <laughs> typical, ty ty typical states are not going to be in any of those um, right. subspaces, in, in which case they won't be eigenstates of the entropy operator as we right. 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 And then we say, well, okay, <coughs> but yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. Right, right. That's right. And then. then uh, and, right. well, this is, after all, not fundamental physics. <laughs> right. And Ammonia would say, well, it, it actually might be the case that um, the actual configuration is um, so, 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 Yes, but uh, that still won't imply that the probability is one of finding it on a measure. Right, right. 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 And, right. and then, the, then the collapse theorists would say, okay, if these are really superpositions of distinct macro states, then the realizing states are going to be close to an I, I, yeah, I, I, I think if we yeah. do it this way, nobody's going to have an emotion because the, right. the weird case is going to the epsilon. Exactly. Right. Right. Say, right. You should live so long. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. So nothing's ever really going to be an eigenstate of the operator, but right. Um, right. It, just, just know, like nothing's ever going. really an eigenstate of anything you want it to be. <laughs> you know? yeah. Right. 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 Uh, is that said correctly that the difference in quantum mechanical interpretation? And Copenhagen and or Bonin or Woodward, uh, and we will have different expression for for entropy operator. Well, same no. entropy operator no. saying no. something no. different things about it. So right. a, a many worldian might say uh, say, well, actually, what happens is there are different entropies on different branches right. or something like that. Right. Right. And the Bonin will say. Here's the entropy operator apply it to the uh, conditional wave function, right? right. 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 To the universal right. wave function. Right. And that which, might be which the right. collapse person can't say because they don't have such a right. right. You're going to say wait for a collapse, right. and then you'll be with an epsilon, blah, blah, blah. Right. So everybody can deal with it, but they'll deal with it in slightly different yeah. right. ways. Right. And uh, maybe it's worth noting they have a description for how to apply the quantum Boltzmann entropy to open quantum systems as well as isolated systems. And they give a work example in terms of uh, the conditional wave function mm -hmm. and the conditional density matrix in Bohmian mm -hmm. mechanics. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd like to see that, but it's in the paper. It, uh, I, I think this is probably a good point. We wanted to go yeah. to 1230. Exactly 1230, I think, is a good place to, to draw a line on this part. Good. Good. Uh, David's, had his hand up. David's had his hand up for a while. Yeah. Uh, since you have activity, yes. uh, is, does this notion of quantum entry give you any analysis of entanglement entry? Any analysis? Well, the... Because uh, you, you take no account of what's going on in the sensor process. So do you have a notion of it? And the sub activity gives you that difference between the Yeah, I think that's taken into account in the description of how this applies to open quantum systems. How entanglement affects the quantum Boltzmann entropy. It's yeah, taken into account you know, by the use of the you know, the motion motion of entropy here. Yeah, I'm page There's a section of the page where it's called entangled in the entropy. Yeah, page 41. Yeah. Right. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about that after. Okay. Well, why don't we go out and reconvene somewhere around 4 o'clock. And I mean, again, we're, we will soon, if not, have already finished with this and anybody who's thinking of wanting to present something, I think has, has three and a half hours to <laughs> decide how to put their hand up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what about that? Generally, when we come back, we'll again be making a decision about what happens next. Okay?